The EU has accused Moscow of blackmail after Russian gas giant Gazprom announced it was cutting supplies to Poland and Bulgaria. Well, Gazprom says it took the decision because the two countries failed to make payments in rubles. The Kremlin has defended the move, with some officials calling for further suspensions of gas to Europe. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen described the move as unacceptable, but insisted that contingency plans were in place. Gazprom's announcement that it is unilaterally stopping gas deliveries to certain EU member states is another provocation from the Kremlin. But it comes as no surprise that the Kremlin uses fossil fuels to try to blackmail us. This is something the European Commission has been preparing for in close coordination and solidarity with member states and international partners. Our response will be immediate united and coordinated. Well, in Brussels, covering that emergency meeting on gas supplies is our correspondent, Shona Maru. We can cross over to her now. Good evening to you, Shona. Uh, you were covering that emergency meeting there on gas supplies. This is an eventuality. This is a prospect that the EU's been talking about for a while now. Uh, they've had a while to get their head around it. But at that meeting today, did they put forward any concrete contingency plans? Well, as you mentioned there, this has been ongoing since even before the Russian invasion. Obviously, uh, the plans to move away from Russian fossil fuels have obviously been accelerated. And today they've had to be accelerated earlier or, or more. So we heard from Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, that the member states met under the gas coordination group where Poland and Bulgaria explained what was happening. And as of now, they've been able to get gas supplies from other member states. She was making the point that this shows the sort of solidarity that exists Exists, as well as the um, impetus uh, to move away from fossil fuels from Russia. She said the era of that is now coming to an end. Uh, and essentially there's a feeling that this is, this is a, an own goal by Russia trying to blackmail member states into uh, purchasing through rubles. Uh, Shona, the aim from Putin on this is clear to sow disunity among EU member states. He hasn't had much luck with that tactic up until now. But could this be the moment when things change? Well, we don't know that yet, but we know that, for example, Hungary isn't on board necessarily. But I think the point from Ursula von der Leyen today, which is that immediately Poland and Bulgaria were able to receive um, supplies from member states, shows that that, that um, ability for Putin to sow disunity uh, may be coming to an end. But I'm joined now by Sergei Lagodinsky, who's a German MEP for the Green Party. Sergei, tell us... Um, I mean, first of all, from a German perspective, what all of this means, this latest move by Russia and the impetus, of course, for Germany to move away from Russian fossil fuels. The impetus is very clear. We have to stop this uh, dependency because this is a self-destructive dependency. And uh, our Green Party has been saying this all along. But unfortunately, this uh, uh, dependency has grown over the years and we have to stop it. Uh, we see this as a warning. Uh, of course, uh, Poland and Bulgaria are very important, but they can substitute uh, their gas supplies for Germany. It will be increasingly difficult. And this is a warning to Germany. Yeah, so what's the timeline? Because we have been discussing this for some time. We've obviously heard reports about the triggering of a, a major recession in Germany. Yet others, particularly in the Greens, say it could be a matter of weeks before you get, let's say, an oil embargo and then moving on to gas. What's your own perspective, given that the Greens are in government, of course? Uh, our um, Ministry of uh, Economy is doing their best. Indeed, uh, um, Mr. Habeck, who is the minister, the Green Minister for Economy, uh, said that uh, in a matter of days, basically, or weeks, we can get rid of the oil dependency. The gas is a different matter. Uh, it was uh, uh, possible to reduce the dependency of, uh, from Russian gas to 35 percent. This is already a big step forward, but 35 percent is still substantial, and it is a, a, a danger of a big recession if if uh, we do it from one day to another, unfortunately, if Russia doesn't leave us any other options, we will have to do it. Yeah. I mean, we also heard that some country, you know, some companies are also paying, have started to pay in rubles. And that would breach the European sanctions. What do you think should happen there? And what do we even know about that situation? Because it appears to come from a Gazprom source. 
Uh, from our uh, information, from our uh, point of view, no company has been paying in rubles uh, from Germany, from the German side at least. Uh, there is a scheme that the Russian side has offered uh, where the payments are in euros, but then they are transferred to another account of the same company and uh, tra transferred into rubles and, and converted into rubles. Uh, the main point here is that we do not want an involvement of the Russia Central Bank because Russia Central Bank is under sanctions. And this is not clear, not very transparent, what role Russian central banks and uh, the whole issue of um, uh, exchange uh, conversions on the, on the exchange uh, is going to play. Uh, one thing is very clear, we cannot undermine our own sanctions and everything should be done that this does not happen. Just on sanctions, I mean, we were talking earlier about um, Putin's plan to sort of sow disunity, as he always does, and again with this sort of move. How, do you, how likely do you think that is, given that we may be coming to the end of the road in relation to sanctions if oil and if you sort of set aside oil and gas? Look, uh, uh, Putin is doing um, here an interesting move, but I think it's a self-destructive move because Bulgaria is actually one of the countries who was very hesitant uh, to put themselves fully on the side of Russia. Uh, if, you, if we talk about weapon uh, uh, supplies for Ukraine, for example, Bulgaria said we will not participate in that, at least not openly. And now Bulgaria is hit by those, uh, uh, by those sanctions or by the, this destructive behavior of Russia. And I think this will backfire uh, to Putin. And this will solidify uh, the European side rather than uh, bring us apart. Um, do you fear that there is ever going to be some sort of fatigue setting in, even though the war crimes, the atrocities keep coming? This is uh, indeed a, a danger, a risk of any ongoing and long uh, prolonged conflicts and we have to do everything possible uh, to keep our mind focused on what is going on in Ukraine and not to start losing ourselves in our own concerns, also economic concerns. But we should be aware of the fact that we uh, should construct and exercise our sanctions so that they are effective and that they hurt the other side more than, they, uh, than it hurts us. This is the main point because geostrategically we are only strong if our economy is functioning and this is also a part of, the, of this uh, puzzle that we have to solve.